Hello folks, StylePoint here, and today we're going to be implementing the Asigmoid activation function. We're going to be implementing it in Python, but this time we're going to be using PyTorch. And we're going to have two different implementations. Well, they're not going to be entirely different, but I think they're different enough that having both of them um, is worth it. And I hope it's going to be both informative and helpful. So let us get into this, but first, before actually implementing this, I want to talk about what is Sigmoid and um, what are some of its features basically okay so this is the sigmoid activation function uh, i generated this plot using matplotlib and added like the the function as a as legend as a as a legend pretty much um, i thought that would be convenient because we can look at it right here and uh, the first thing we notice is that it looks like the uh, s-shaped it looks like it's a it's an s-shaped distribution and it is um, and it's kind of cool because the sigmoid itself, it starts with letter S, so uh, it's easy to remember how it looks. Uh, and it looks this way from a negative infinity to positive infinity. I do have the input domain from minus 8 to 8, but you can kind of flip this uh, 8 and turn it into infinity in your minds, and you can, you can think of it uh, uh, that way. Um, now, this is the formula for sigmoid. It's 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus x, and this uh, representation to the right is an equivalent uh, formula. Well, it's equivalent because if we multiply both the uh, both the uh, numerator and the uh, denominator by the uh, e to the power of x, we're going to get th that representation. Okay, so um, what is sigmoid useful for? Well, number one, it's mapping values to 0, 1 uh, interval. As you can see, all the values it takes are from 0 to 1. It can never actually be equal to 0 or 1 because these values can only be achieved um, as like limits. The limit of uh, S of X right here, as X approaches negative infinity is zero, and the limit of this as X approaches positive infinity is one. Uh, but notice that as X, I meant, I said as X approaches negative, negative infinity, as X approaches positive infinity. So X can never be equal to these values. Um, so we can never really be equal to like zero. Sigma can never be equal to zero, the values produced by sigmoid, or one. Now in practice, of course, we're gonna have some numerical uh, limits and we're gonna get some zeros, but uh, but that's, we cannot really avoid that. Uh, but, um, but these are, again, the values that um, technically we should not be able to get. Um, now, uh, as I said, sigmoid is very useful for mapping values to probabilities. We give sigmoid a real number and it maps it to a, a zero one interval. And we saw that in logistic regression where we gave the output of a linear function to the sigmoid and it mapped it to a, uh, to a probability pretty much. Um, there is also uh, an extension of sigmoid called softmax that can be used for a multi-class classification. But sigmoid in general, that's used for binary classification, okay? So the first use for binary classification. Um, another use is um, in models like LSTMs where uh, we, we want to get a number from zero to one in order to then control the flow of information. In LSTMs, uh, um, one of the gates it contains sigmoid and if the value returned by sigmoid is near one, it means that we're gonna pass a lot of information. If the value is near zero, we're gonna say, okay, we're not pretty much not passing any information, okay? And if it's in between, we're like moderate in passing the information. So um, because uh, sigmoid maps value onto a zero one interval, we could also uh, interpret this value as a degree to which we allow something to happen, if you will, okay? Uh, kind of similar to how it works in logistic regression and binary classification problems, but I guess a different use here, okay? Um, and another, uh, use of sigmoid is, of course, introducing what's known as nonlinearity. Um, so as we know, uh, linear distributions are, are not the only kind of distributions. In well, in, in most cases, we have to deal with distributions that are not strictly linear. And that means if we just use linear regression, uh, that's not going to help, right? Because uh, fitting a line onto a distribution that does not, is, is not linear in nature, uh, it's not, it's not, it's not going to give us good approximation. So in order to have a better uh, uh, function, um, uh, which is like an approximation of uh, of the function of the uh, of the distribution itself, uh, we need to be able to introduce nonlinearity, and that is done by using nonlinear functions. And sigmoid is a nonlinear function. Uh, that is the reason um, why it's uh, uh, also used in logistic regression. One of the reasons it's it 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 uh, introduces nonlinearity, right? Um, 
Now, uh, the final thing I want to discuss here when it comes to uh, sigmoid, there are other things we could discuss as well, but uh, to keep it short, um, if x is a very small negative number, like minus 10,000, then minus x is a very large positive number, 10,000. Well, 10,000 is large enough in this case, okay? So uh, we're going to call it large. Then e to the power of minus x, that's likely going to overflow. So in case it overflows, we're going to use this representation right here. Okay, we're going to get zero likely in this case if x is a very small negative number, like minus 10,000. Uh, but zero is better than like getting errors. Okay, so um, this is the representation we're going to be using uh, when x uh, is, uh, uh, is negative pretty much. And if x is positive, we're going to use this, this representation. Um, now, we're going to be computing the, uh, 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 the derivative for the sigmoid, and then we're going to be implementing it. So uh, let's do this. For the uh, derivative computation, I'm actually going to use this second form or second uh, representation of sigmoid where, where it's e to the power of x over 1 plus e to the power of x. Again, it's equivalent, so uh, and we want the uh, derivative of that. Well, the first thing we're going to notice here that it's, it's a fraction, and we can use this uh, fraction derivative formula where uh, the derivative of a over b is uh, derivative of a times b minus derivative of b times a over b squared. So let's apply this. What do we get? It's going to be a derivative of e to the power of x, which is e to the power of x, uh, times 1 plus e to the power of x, minus uh, derivative of 1 plus e to the power of x, um, which is going to be e to the power of x, times e to the power of x. This whole expression over 1 plus e to the power of x squared. And notice that, of course, uh, you know, we also have to probably add this e to the power of x over 1 plus e to the power of x. Let's have that formula there as well. Okay, the first thing we see here, e to the power of x, if we simplify this expression, we're going to see that uh, pretty much uh, this one is going to be this way, basically, over this. Okay, so uh, we can see that these two values are going to give us 0. Actually, let's do it this way. So these two values, that's zero pretty much. We can take that away. And this is what we get as a derivative, okay? Now, notice that this can be simplified as s of x, so sigmoid times one over one, uh, sigmoid times e to the uh, one over one plus e to the power of x. Now, also notice that this expression right here is 1 minus sigmoid, right? Because what is 1 minus s of x here? It is 1 plus e to the power of x minus e to the power of x over 1 plus e to the power of x, which is 1 over 1 plus e to the power of x. Okay, so this actually is sigmoid times 1 minus sigmoid. Super cool. So if we compute sigmoid, then we know how to compute its derivative pretty much. It's sigmoid times 1 minus sigmoid. Okay, now we're going to implement it. Um, so we import torch here, and we define class sigmoid, which inherits from torch autograd function. Okay, and we need to have both forward and backward methods. For uh, The forward method is used for the uh, forward pass, basically. We're going to be using it in the forward pass. And backward, of course, that's going to be used in the uh, back propagation. Okay, so... Um, the, word, the way we're going to implement it, as I said, is that for negative values of x, we're going to use this uh, uh, second like uh, implementation, se second representation, the one to the right. And if x is positive, we're going to use the representation to the left. Okay, the way to do that, we could do like um, some some masks for that, so we can get all the uh, all the uh, an array of booleans pretty much where. Uh, um, data is less than zero, so where the element is less than zero. This we can do because uh, a torch supports broadcasting, of course, and positive mask is going to be a negation of negative mask. Um, this is the uh, negation operator, so not, nothing fancy there. Uh, then we can define, like, uh, one way to do it is basically if we uh, pre-compute, like, the values of, uh, of these e to the power of x's and e to the power of minus x's, and one way to do it is basically to have this variable called I called it Z, you could call it whatever. Um, and then to have like a negative mask values and positive mask values. Um, and then uh, we can define torch ones like data. Uh, and 
empty like, one's like, it basically empty like initializes, uh, well, it creates an empty uh, torch tensor, which has the same shape as data, and uh, uh, torch one's like, that creates uh, uh, an empty torch. Well, it's not going to be an empty one. It's going to be a, a torch tensor uh, uh, of ones. It's going to be a tensor of ones that has the same shape uh, as data. And uh, result at negative mask, we can, we can make it um, equal to zz neg negative mask, I guess. And then uh, result itself, we can say res over 1 plus z's. And this is going to be a numerical table implementation. Uh, and then we can return result. For backpropagation, um, what we can do is that because we know the result here, we compute it, and we also know that the derivative is sigmoid times 1 minus sigmoid, if we can store this result, we can then use it in the backward method. And that's what we're going to do, actually. So what we can do is that, you see, I've passed this context. It's like a special, uh, special like parameter that PyTorch allows us to pass to forward method. And what it has, one of the methods or one of the kind of functions or tools it provides is that there is this thing called save for backward. And just like the, uh, as the name suggests, save for backward, it means save this for the backward pass, you know, for the back propagation. And we're going to save the result because we know derivative of a sigmoid is sigmoid times one minus sigmoid. And sigmoid, we already computed that. What we can do in backward, we can say, unpack this. We saved it here, so we can use it here uh, by saying contact saved tensors. Okay. And then we say, say the gradient is result sigmoid, which is the result we stored, times one minus sigmoid. How cool is that? And then we're going to say, well, just return the grad output times grad. This is the chain rule, basically, in the back propagation. Grad output is what, whatever we get and, uh, uh, up until this point. But here we need to use the uh, sigmoid derivative, and we use that. OK. That is the entire implementation. And we also have the testing for this. We have what's known as uh, grad check. What grad check does is that it compares our uh, the results of our implementation to the uh, a numerical approximations and uh, if our approximation is close enough to the numerical approximations then like the test successfully pass it passes okay grad check successful so that's awesome now as i said we're also going to cover the uh alternative implementation it's not too different but it's different enough so let's make it double underscore sigmoid for now i've already kind of defined this beforehand so that we don't have to define it uh, the alternative implementation, it actually uh, doesn't do anything but forward. The reason for that is because uh, Torch actually, PyTorch actually knows how to compute derivatives, uh, uh, how to do backpropagation with built-in operations. So in fact, we don't really need to do backward manual in this case because all, all we are using in forward method are operations for which uh, uh, PyTorch knows how to compute gradients, how to compute derivatives, like the less than operation. Uh, well, it's it's not even that. Like exponentiation here, uh, um, you know, addition, division. These are uh, somewhat trivial operations that PyTorch knows how to handle automatically. So all we really need is we need to uh, import this torch, but and also we can import the uh, torch.nn as nn. That's uh, what we're going to be using for inheritance. We're going to inherit from nn module. We're going to do inheritance, and we're only going to implement the forward method. Because again, uh, for the backward method, Torch automatically knows how to compute uh, uh, the gradients for this because it knows how to compute gradients for every single operation here. Okay, and here we need to change it a bit. So before that, we had to define sigmoid as sigma dot apply because that's how the uh, how it works with Torch autograd function. We have to define it as sigma dot apply, but here we can de define the sigmoid like this. Well, let's run this. And there we have it, grad check successful. So these are two different implementations. Um, this implementation right here with uh, uh, with both forward and backward method, of course, that's more flexible. Um, in this case, PyTorch did know how to uh, do backward, uh, uh, how to do back propagation with the operations that uh, we used here. But it's if it's some custom activation function, uh, it might not know how to do, uh, how to do uh, uh, back propagation with it, and we need to be able to implement the backward method manually. So I wanted to uh, cover that as well. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope it was informative and uh, hopefully helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, comment in the comment section. I'm going to try to respond to all of the uh, questions and uh, take into account the uh, suggestions. So thanks a lot, and I'm going to see you next time.